This is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and this is part three of my beginner chess opening series on the French defense. So in part one, I covered uh, what to do against the... I guess the main line with uh, three knight c3 by white. And in part two, I, I covered what to do as black against the uh, another main line with knight d2 as the third move for white, the Tarash variation. So in this third video here on the French, I'm uh, really going to be focusing a lot on the exchange variation as well as other sidelines where uh, you know you might they might come up in some of your games so just kicking it off here the exchange variation you might see this especially you know, it's a beginner series so beginners will throw anything at you so in the exchange variation quite simple white is going to be exchanging the pawns here and so the most aggressive variation the most topical I, I suppose you could say in this exchange variation would be to play c4 and it's kind of like a pan off attack from the carol con uh you don't see this so much but you know trying to put some immediate pressure on the d5 pawn so knight f6 is what i'd recommend and the most aggressive move here for white would be bishop to g5 so continuing to put pressure However, the difference in the French defense in this type of position, as opposed to the Carol Khan, is that the E file is open. And so, just throwing in a check here with the bishop, black is just going to dip out with the king. And now, you know, white is going to have immediate problems on the E file, and they're extremely difficult to, uh, to solve here. So, let's say... If white, you know, moves this bishop here, I, I would say right when he moves the bishop, just snatch the pawn. Just take the pawn and, and you know, make white, at, at the very least, he's going to be wasting a tempo there. So I think black has got no problem. And if anything, like knight to f3, you know, white is still trying to develop fast and, and whatnot. Throw the check in. Now he's probably going to play bishop e2, snatch this pawn right away. And in this kind of game, I think black is almost winning out of the opening. Just snatching the pawn. Now after castles, important here, you got to, you know, snatch this knight and consolidate the extra pawn with b5. And I, I think that black is going to have a very comfortable game here with, you know, a monster bishop on b7. The extra pawn, black is just fine out of the opening. A, a dream out of the opening is black, you could say. Another idea after this knight f6 is to immediately play knight c3. And a uh, very similar recommendation, just bishop to b4. Don't take the pawn on c4 until white moves the bishop. You don't want to take it. You know, there's no sense in taking this pawn and letting letting white effectively gain a tempo by, you know, capturing directly with his bishop. That is the last thing in the world you want because that's exactly why white is playing this type of opening. So instead, just take it easy, bishop to b4. And in this kind of position as well, black is going to be getting his king out of the center, putting some pressure on the white king on the e file if you want to get a little greedy maybe you could even try to play a move like bishop to uh, g4 to put some pressure on white so the exchange variation not you know this is the most um, ag aggressive line you could say with c4 now this also reminds me of the exchange variation in the Carol Khan somewhat. This bishop d3 idea, and it's really targeted on limiting black's development of his light square bishop on c8. So with bishop to d3, now I, I'm going to recommend a very solid setup that's versatile and that can be employed against many different types of, of uh, white setups in, in the exchange variation against the French. And the setup is going to go something like knight to c6, so make white react by defending that pawn. So if he moves the knight to f6, you're going to immediately come in and put this pin on him, develop your, your light square bishop, which could be a problem piece, and you know put some pressure on d4. White will probably respond with a, a more solid move like c3. And here's where this, this setup that I'm talking about is going to come into play. So bishop to d6 is important to deprive white uh, of an easy development of his dark squared bishop. And um, in a position like this, I would just say, you know, keep it high and tight. You know, knight to knight g to e7 here, and uh, you know maybe maybe exchange the light square bishop off in the future. You got to be a little bit careful. I mean, looking at white, looking at black's position, it's very consolidated. It's uh, it's very tight. It's gonna be tough for white to to really get some easy development going. You could say, but one thing to keep keep track of is some tactics in this line. Let's say after knight here, 
Um, I don't know. A move like bishop to g4 would almost be losing. It would at least lose a pawn in that bishop takes h7. So this is something to keep in mind when you got your knight on e7 here. King takes knight g5 check whammy, and you just you drop the bishop. Your, your king's almost getting mated. Um, this discover attack. So just a tactic to keep in mind in this type of position with the knight on e7. It's not defending the king quite as much. But, you know, against bishop g5, maybe f6 is just fine. And um, this is, you know, black, is, black has got game here. You, you've got a free position to develop and move forward. So, okay, so that's going to do it for the exchange variation. That last setup I reviewed, you, you can probably, you can employ that against a lot of lines in the exchange variations. So a very versatile line. So another sideline, now we're, now we're going to check out some sidelines. So Bobby Fischer, back in the day, used to play the King's Indian attack when he was coming up in the chess world. And the King's Indian attack will go something like this. I, I believe I've seen a few games where he used it to avoid the main lines in the French. After e6, white's just going to play d3. And this is going to cover a lot of sidelines where people are trying to sidestep the French for whatever reason. And against d3, I'm going to recommend you change your strategy maybe a little bit here and, and play something like c5. Start picking up on these dark squares in the center. And however white wants to play it, you know, with the move order, um, the basic structure is what I want to teach here for the black side. And it, it goes something like this, maybe an, an early d5. This, this type of tight structure is something I've seen Kasparov employ a lot of times with the Sicilian, but by a transposition of moves, I, I've seen you know, him use this kind of setup here. It's very solid, and it's also versatile with respect to you know, how you're going to react to your opponent's plan. So in this position, just go ahead with g6. You, you know, this is out of the French. It's kind of out of the scope of the series, but I didn't want to cover it because this is applicable to a variety of sidelines white can choose that, that you know, avoid the main forcing lines that you'll see. So it's good to have on hand. So now with g6, preparing the fianchetto. And, you know, I, I don't want to get too carried away in this, but I do want to explain just an idea that I've come across myself playing the King's Indian attack. And it involves getting this bishop, this light square bishop, which can be a problem, getting it out uh, of the, uh, the pawn chain here. Let's say something like this. And bishop to a6. This diagonal can cause white some uncomfortable, you know, it's a little bit awkward for white's, white's pieces. So just to recap, this is against the king's Indian. King's Indian attack or any move order where you can just, you know, you don't have to play c5 right away. You could continue with d5 as well. This is a flexible move order. But the very, the, the principle, it, it, this could come from the French. And I think this is the best, simplest, and easiest to learn response for black uh, against, you know, any kind of sidelines by white that aren't putting immediate pressure on the center. So, okay, so bishop to a6, just, just a nice idea. It puts a little pressure. So, going back here, I want to cover a, a gambit line real quick that I, I think it's called the fantasy variation in the carol con and this this line reminds me of it as well most people won't play this but again this is a beginner series beginners will come up with anything so the fantasy line I, i'm talking about this gambit is with c4 and the the idea is cool i mean i do like the idea with f3 here but the refutation you know i i think is pretty simple so what i'm going to recommend do not take this pawn if you take the pawn, you're giving white all the reason to play this kind of gambit. White's getting the, you know, this free center. He, he sacrificed the F pawn, which is really just going to be open files later. And black is just, you know, played E6, which is not exactly the most active move right away. So all I'm going to recommend is something very simple. After F3, don't take the pawn. Play knight F6. Hold on to this pawn. There's a very big difference between you know, an exchange that you didn't initiate. And, and what I mean with that is, let's look at it. I mean, initiating the exchange, taking, white is developing. Now let's think, knight f6, white is gonna initiate the exchange here, if he does, and black is developing the knight closer to the center. 
very big difference those little things that's like gaining a move so white will probably i don't know i mean he'll probably try to continue putting pressure on black to give him the pawn and i i would just keep putting counter pressure say okay bishop b4 i'm gonna white you know the, the trick for black you can hold the pawn and, and you don't give white any space but you got to play real actively let's say bishop to g5 and i i think c5 here and I, I think that black has absolutely nothing to worry about coming out of this opening. Let's say d5. This is just a sample line, but I just want to get the point across. Black has nothing to worry about. Maybe now um, you could either play e3, just uh, stunting white's development. Or you could even take the pawn now that the dust is cleared a little bit. And, and now castles. And I, I don't think that white can really say he's got a lot of compensation for the pawn because black's position your black played very actively so again the key in this gambit situation just don't take the pawn you know if you're going to take it you got to take it way down the road but try to hold on to it really try to make white earn it by playing actively with the black pieces so for the last sideline i want to cover this is really silly but you know some people will play it and, and my recommendation is going to be very similar to what we covered against the king's indian attack if queen to e2 so queen to e2 is a really bad move it, it doesn't obey any of the principles of the opening as far as developing your pieces and trying to control the center it's a cheapo and, and what it's hoping for is you're going to play d5 now he's going to take, and oh, the pawn is pinned. So now after queen takes d5, it's like a bad Scandinavian for black, I guess. Uh, knight c3, and this is just silly. You know, there's no reason to play d5 after queen e2. It's kind of like, are you paying attention? So if black is paying attention, you're going to play something like c5, and this formation is probably going to look pretty similar to you. Now with knight c6, just hold off on d5. Just, just hold off for just a minute. Maybe something like knight to e7. This is kind of important. If knight to f6, e5, and now maybe you're, you know, after knight d5 and, and I don't know, let's say knight e4, you're starting to make white look smart for playing a bad move with queen e2. So just keep it high and tight. Protect the rock. And uh, knight e7, the knight on c6, very tight, very well coordinated for black. You can fianchetto if you'd like, or you can play directly in the center with d5. So this concludes part three of the French Defense uh, Beginner Chess Opening Series. And uh, this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net. And thanks for tuning in.